Hello and welcome, I'm Oles Gerdyuk and you're watching Head to Head with UATV. Tensions between the Russian energy company Gazprom and Ukraine's Naftogaz continue to rise. Recently, Gazprom has initiated international arbitration proceedings over the fine of more than $6 billion imposed on Russia by Ukraine's anti-monopoly committee. To talk more about this, we welcome to the studio today Natalia Katsarbuchkovska, member of the Ukrainian parliament who sits on the parliament's energy committee. Hello and thank you for being with us today. Hello. So, first of all, explain our audience, please, what is happening between Gazprom mm -hmm. and Naftogaz and why Gazprom um, has initiated this arbitration uh, procedure over the, the court decision. Well, first of all, uh, according to contract signed in 2008, all, uh, uh, when, we, uh, when Ukraine signed contract uh, to su uh, gas supply and uh, uh, transit, uh, this contract, according to the AVA Anti-Monopoly Committee, was uh, um, actually um, uh, uh, was uh, as a contract which was uh, signed by the political pressure and uh, AVA Anti-Monopoly anti Committee uh, held that this contract is uh, uh, shown that uh, Gazprom uh, misused their monopolistic position on the market. Uh, so first of all, Ukraine should uh, take uh, more gas that we, we can consume and that we need. The price, the price was twice as expensive as it in uh, whatever in the market, and we couldn't resell this gas. Uh, uh, so th all these uh, points show that uh, uh, Ukraine was under political pressure and uh, uh, supplier Gazprom misused uh, his dominance position. So our an anti monopoly committee held uh, and fined Gazprom uh, uh, by $8 billion fine. Eight uh, or six? Eight. 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 And now Gazprom tried to protect uh, and to show that this uh, decision is not right, so they are trying to protect their rights. So therefore they uh, apply, uh, um, apply file to UN Commission on International Trade Law uh, and uh, there would be, well, court hearings and we also will uh, protect and defend our anti-monopoly committee decision. Mm -hmm. Well, you were saying that uh, the fine was 8 billion uh, US dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, why do they claim 6 then? 6, sorry, it was 6. Uh -huh, so it, it was, was 6, six billion six. US dollars. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, uh, but um, uh, so now they protect their investment, basically. Mm -hmm. They protect their investment and they demand to, to cancel this uh, this decision by a uh, Ukrainian anti-monopoly committee, as far as I understand. Uh, yes, you're right, uh, but uh, they actually uh, claim that it's investment, but it's not investment by its nature, it's trade yeah. contract. Uh, so I don't think they have a lot of chance to win this case. And you said the contract is halted, so it's not in force anymore. Uh, no, this contract is in force. Is in force. In its force between Ukraine and Gazprom. So uh, until 2019, it's transit uh, and uh, uh, contract of to supply gas to Ukraine. But we are not buying gas uh, uh, because uh, the price is higher than in market. Mm -hmm. So according to the decision of uh, Stockholm arbitration uh, late this uh, year. Uh, we uh, uh, we won and uh, we have a right to not to follow this uh, uh, contract but to buy gas when we look that gas on the European markets is cheaper and uh, since 2000 15, we are buying gas from different European traders and it's more profitable for Ukrainians mm -hmm. and uh, to buy from Gazprom. So we're picking the cheapest price and we're buying the cheapest price. Which is price. nature, absolutely, in the mar is there any market. Well, this is, th this is how trade works, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. But uh, Russian officials at the same time are claiming that uh, this fine, 6 billion uh, US dollars, and in general, Ukraine's actions are breaching the agreement signed between the governments of two countries. Are we really breaking some rules or is this another red herring of Russia? Yes, this uh, this uh, our contract uh, and agreement is agreement on promotion and protection of investment between Ukraine and Russian Federation, uh, date uh, uh, 1, 1, 19, 19 uh, November, um, and it was signed ten years ago, and it's still uh, it's it's still uh, valid. Valid, uh, but uh, it's about uh, investment protection. As, as I said, it's not investment; it's a trade contract uh, between two companies, yes. and uh, it's a different domain of law. It's anti-monopoly law, which is 
quite different from investment law. Mm -hmm. So I think they just take any, anything they can to, sh to, to file these uh, lawsuits against Ukraine, to postpone peri period uh, uh, when we can uh, uh, when we can execute this decision of Avanti Monopoly Committee. So it's just like they want to win some time uh, to, to protect their interests. Did Ukraine expect this hit back from Russia? Of course, it's, it's absolutely predictable uh, because Russian used uh, all tools uh, to, well, to put Ukraine in um, position when we cannot protect our economic interests. Uh, so this is hybrid war between countries and uh, they use uh, economic, uh, military, uh, information, uh, energy as a weapon against Ukraine. So they are also using uh, possibility to sue Ukraine, to block uh, execution of decision against them of international courts. So it's absolutely predictable and uh, Ukraine is, was ready to, uh, to see this uh, claim in uh, this court. Well, there were already some cases submitted and already some sentences even issued by a Stockholm Arbitration Court, I remember, uh, last uh, uh, spring. Uh, could you remind us uh, what were they about and uh, um, does Ukraine receive any compensation, any financial reimbursement for, mm -hmm. for, for the losses? First of all, the most important case was uh, uh, against uh, a provision in contract uh, which named Take or Pay. So according to this provision, uh, Ukraine should buy gas which, which we are not was able to use, uh, were not able to use. And it was a uh, uh, fixed price. Price was twice as expensive uh, uh, as everywhere in market, in European market. So what is more important, we couldn't uh, resell this gas. Uh, so it's absolutely a position that we should uh, what should we do with this gas if we will not consume this gas? Just store it? Yes, yeah, store it, but we, we should pay this mm -hmm. high price. So this case shows that uh, uh, Ukraine was under political pressure when we uh, when Ukraine uh, government signed this uh, this contract. It was absolutely unprofitable for our nations, for our state, and uh, according to this uh, contract, we owe uh, we owe uh, uh, to uh, Gazprom 46 billion euro. Uh, so when we won this case, so we release our budget from this obligation, and it's very that will be so hard for us to pay. Yes, it would extra be forty six billion. We couldn't pay extra forty six billion, so it would it was absolutely economic catastrophe in case we lose this uh, lose this case. But it's absolutely nature that we win because uh, it uh, obvious that this contract was politically motivated. This contract was under pressure. This contract was unprofitable, and Ukraine was in position when we just should sign this contract. We do not, we didn't have uh, any other choices. So now uh, uh, we started in 2014 when we came to parliament, we started uh, uh, economic reforms and uh, uh, energy security reforms, not to put Ukraine in the same position as it was in 2008 when we signed this uh, uh, contract. Uh, so now we have choice. Uh, first of all, we have uh, a competitive market price uh, and we can choose from whom to buy, mm -hmm. uh, at what price. Uh, this price is tagged with uh, uh, German hub and uh, it's absolutely transparent. You can see the price of gas, you can see the price of transit, the price of storage, mm -hmm. uh, of distribution, and you could calculate your price. So now the situation is more or less uh, competitive and transparent in our gas market. Uh, so uh, we also create industrial gas market. Uh, so uh, now for industry can buy uh, gas uh, on the market. Uh, they could choose uh, suppliers uh, and uh, uh, it helps the economy to grow and it looks like uh, more transparent. There is no any kickbacks, uh, bribes on industrial market level. So, and it means that we are not in the position that we should buy at, for such, uh, at such price sure. from one, one supplier Gazprom. Well, and as of other decisions of Stockholm Arbitration Court, I remember there was a case about uh, um, them halting the yeah about the the transit mm -hmm. gas transit, and also uh, when they stopped uh, gas supply for quite a few days uh, to Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Well. Uh, 
all these cases uh, are now in, in the courts and Ukraine uh, won first instance uh, uh, when, uh, it, when it comes to transit and now it's a, in a court of appeal. Uh, this case in Court of Appeal, uh, so we have a very good chance to win this case uh, as well. Uh, but it's a very difficult process, it's long, long lasting uh, um, uh, court hearings. Uh, so let, let, let's see, but according to the European law, we have all rights and all chances to succeed in these cases as well. Well, according to Yuri Vitrenko, the commercial director at mm -hmm. Ukraine's Nafta Gas, uh, the Ukrainian company has already um, received 18 million US dollars, um, some financial compensation from Gazprom. Mm -hmm. um, does this influence much the energy market in Ukraine? Or comparing basically mm -hmm. millions to billions, this, this is well, not very, very much. According to a uh, take or pay case, uh, uh, we uh, first of all not obliged to pay 46 billion uh, to Russia and they uh, have to pay us uh, 2.6 uh, billion to Ukraine. And now Naftogaz initiated law cases uh, in different European countries uh, to execute this Stockholm arbitration decision uh, to uh, take some assets, uh, money from uh, Gazprom mm -hmm. and they are quite successful. They already have uh, some results, as you said, 18 millions and and more. Uh, to my so knowledge. this is confiscated stuff, basically. Yes, uh, this, this is, is not uh, direct financial payment. Execution from different uh, 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 lawsuits from different uh, countries. So they are trying to find assets uh, to file lawsuits uh, to execute Stockholm arbitration. And this is way how to take this mm -hmm. money back to Ukrainian budget. Are we talking about assets only throughout Ukraine or also no, in no, the territory no. of Europe? Uh, in, uh, uh, as I know, uh, there are few cases in Netherlands and they won these cases against uh, Gazprom, the same as in, in Sweden, uh, in uh, Switzerland. Uh, so uh, what in every country where uh, Gazprom has assets, they can uh, file these lawsuits to, to, to take these assets and to execute the Stockholm arbitration decision. Mm -hmm. So Ukraine's company files the lawsuit mm -hmm. when they find the asset, right? And then mm -hmm. th only then they can confiscate of it course, or not? Yes, uh -huh. there is an execution of decision of uh, Stockholm arbitration. What about the current situation with gas supply in mm -hmm. Ukraine? Where do we get our gas from? Well, first of all, we are, as I said, we have a fully mar uh, functioning gas market now and we are buying uh, where it is more cheaper mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there is uh, more than 100 gas traders in Ukraine. So they uh, trade gas and they buy gas from Slovenia, Pol Poland, Sl uh, Czech Republic, uh, so they can uh, contract gas and uh, then supply to Ukraine. Naftogaz, uh, they are also buying gas from uh, European suppliers uh, and uh, they are also players on the market, but the share of gas, Naftogaz uh, is very small. Mm -hmm. And how do we use our energy potential? Uh, I think uh, we, we have a very big energy potential. We can even extract more than we use. Uh, but now it's not the case. Uh, the extraction is growing. Uh, uh, domestic production of natural gas is growing, but very slowly. Uh, so Why there, so? Uh, but, but because Ukraine was not competitive on energy market. Uh, now uh, we created the condition, we decrease uh, royalties up to the level of, uh, of 6 and uh, 14 percent uh, just to make Ukraine more competitive on the extraction level. And now if, uh, international investors are looking and they are looking on Ukrainian market, they are start uh, negotiation to uh, obtain license uh, to produce gas in Ukraine. So I, I, uh, I hope that the situation will change in the next few years and will extract more. Because Ukraine has one trillion uh, deposits of natural gas and we extract only 20 millions mm -hmm. uh, per year. You're saying that that would be enough to cover all of the Ukraine yes. and also to export some of it? I, I hope we'll reach this point when we can cover our needs. At uh, least, yes. Yeah, at least. Uh, and for, uh, it would be cheaper for our population to receive Ukrainian gas because uh, there will be less uh, uh, payment for, tra uh, for transit, storage and uh, um, currency uh, risks. 
uh, uh, would be correct. So, of course, gas from uh, our nature, na uh, from our domestic production, would be cheaper than uh, imported gas, mm -hmm. uh, but not uh, 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 not cheap as uh, someone promised. So, gas has uh, own price. To extract gas, it also costs a lot of investments, a lot of money. Uh, it would be uh, it would be market price, but uh, but condition would be better for, for population, for instance. Well, you mentioned uh, this uh, progress of your work on improving uh, mm -hmm. the energy sector in Ukraine since 2014. And now I would like to talk about uh, Russian uh, fake news to discredit mm -hmm. Ukrainian mm -hmm. reforms mm -hmm. in uh, this energy sector. And uh, uh, we found an interesting um, quote, your quote, um, in uh, Voice of Ukraine newspaper. Mm -hmm. Let me read it out. Gobbles like propaganda machine of the Russian Federation is constantly attacking the fuel and energy sector of Ukraine. Russia is repeatedly trying to discredit Ukraine as an unreliable gas mm -hmm. transmitter mm -hmm. to defraud Ukraine's nuclear industry and even to blacken the green energy generation. Um, could you tell us the latest myths that Russia has created about and against Ukraine? First, first of all, uh, it's a big, uh, big strategy. They have big informational propaganda strategy to discriminate Ukraine in every sphere. Not only in energy, but energy is 30% of our economy. Ukraine is the biggest transit uh, country to, uh, to Europe. And uh, the aim of Russia is to bypass Ukraine, gas transit, and to show Europe that Ukraine is an unreliable partner. So they are using different tools, uh, such as uh, lawsuits, uh, informational campaigns. They said that our gas transportation system is... Uh, uh, um, well, uh, it's outdated, uh, it's not modern, uh, but it's not true. So we transit gas even in, during the war and uh, the transit is, uh, um, the system is the biggest in Europe. It's, uh, we invest a lot of modernization uh, money of, of, uh, to modernize this system. So it's absolutely untrue. So then they show that, for instance, uh, renewables in Ukraine uh, they are too expensive, this is a big bargain uh, for our taxpayers, which is also untrue because uh, taxpayers, uh, they uh, don't pay for renewables in Ukraine, just to oppose population against to make uh, uh, renewables uh, reputations that uh, they are harmful for uh, household budgets. It's not, it's not the case, so we have system when, for instance, it's not the uh, ideal system, but still uh, we subsidize renewables from different uh, type of generation uh, just to make Ukraine more independent and uh, sustainable. We also care about ecology. So uh, what they, uh, they assign articles, uh, they are, um, well, uh, have some roundtable discussion when they are trying to show that Ukraine uh, is weak states. But it's not the case and uh, we are trying to protect, we show this uh, propaganda machine, uh, we show, uh, we tell about truth during different confer uh, conference meetings with uh, our international partners. So uh, it's also uh, aim and task of parliament to be a good uh, uh, diplomat and uh, to promote Ukrainian interests and to uh, tell truth to, to the world. Yes, and to know how to fight back, for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for your interesting comments. Thank mm -hmm. you for being a guest today in our studio. Thank you. That was Natalia Katsarbuchkovska, member of Ukrainian Parliament. Thank you for watching Head to Head. I'm Alas Garduk. Goodbye.